Saluton, parolas Tomaso, kai bon venon al la nawa el sendo. Hello, everybody. It's Tomaso here, and this is going to be our weekly Esperanto Duolingo practice session. Glad you guys could be here. Saluton, Holly. Saluton, Eric. Kai shamanio. Ah, yeah. Yes, estas bone revidivin. This is the Esperanto Variety Show where we have information, videos in Esperanto and about Esperanto with new videos every Thursday. Shenas que mi devas voki mian filon. Momenton. Jonah, chivi audas la pe... Yes, li audas la pe filon. Kai chio estas en ordo. Yes, to tio estas normal la tago en la domo de familio Alexander. Kai... Ni lavas teleroin kai faras tiain normalain chiutagain aferoin. I had a request or a comment last week that said that what we like is seeing questions, questions on the Duolingo forum and answering them. So that's how we're going to start out here. Jay Brock asks, can you say mal proxima cuisino venis or does word order matter, word order matter here and why? So let's see what the sentence is that he's asking about. Venis mal proxima cuisino. All right, so we know it's a female cousin. Venis mal proxima cuisino. All right, so this is a slightly unusual word order because the verb is coming first and the subject is coming second, right? So it's the cousin who's coming. Mal proxima cuisino venis. And his question was, can you say mal proxima cuisino venis? I'm going to say, yes, you can. Yes, you can say it that way. This word order is fairly common. Uh, for, yeah, it's actually fairly common with like venice, other words like that, but not mandatory. All right, there we go. Let's see what other things people are asking about with the sentences they find in Duolingo. Let's see, this has got to be the one that, um, oh, here we go. This is from Mi Estas Lolitzon. Mi Estas Lolitzon. Lolitzon. Mi estas lolitzon. Yeah, so I don't know if that's supposed to be accusative, which would be a mistake, or whether the person's name is lolitzon. Mi estas lolitzon. In the rules it is written that all the prepositions require the nominative. Let me say it this way. It's not true that all prepositions require the nominative. So let's, first of all, let's open up this in another window and see what that forum com comment is. Complete grammar of Esperanto. Oh, okay. So this looks like the famous 16 rules of, of Esperanto grammar. You know, let's look at prepositions. All the prepositions require the nominative. Okay. So what the person is saying is correct. But let's find out the other part of the rule that he missed. Each preposition has a constant meaning. Okay. In order to show, yeah. All right. There we go. This is the part uh, that he's missing. It's the 13th rule of Esperanto. In order to show direction words, take the termination of the accusative. Be sure to read rule 13. And then I also always like to put in my, we talked about this last time, keys to Esperanto prepositions. More detail here. You guys know how to, you guys know about that, right? Motion and prepositions. All right, let me just, yeah, be sure to read rule 13. 13, in order to show direction, words take the termination of the accusative. More detail here. All right, yep, I think that's a good answer. So the plan today, for those of you who are just popping in, is to go through some Duolingo, either exercises or sent, or forum questions that people where people are asking questions. Um, if you guys have any questions you want to put in the chat, feel free. I'll answer them if I can. I don't think the 16 rules of Esperanto grammar are a great way to learn Esperanto in 2019. Uh, there, are, there are other ways of presenting the language so that it makes so that it makes more sense, and that's that's why I wrote that blog post so I can explain it the way that I want to, rather than the the way it's written, the way it was written in 1887. Ren Renry J says the female records is terrible and voice unpleasant this exercise is torture and i thought what a mean thing to say i said back if you think that's bad imagine going through life unable to say something nice about someone who goes out of her way to provide a free learning opportunity yep so yeah the i'm assuming the i don't know for sure which voice it is because i can't play it back but 
if if you're hearing a voice on Duolingo, you can be sure that it's somebody who's volunteering to keep the course moving, add alternate sentences to the course. Um, I just want to underscore: this is not something that I do. I don't I don't do that behind the scenes stuff on Duolingo. Um, I hang out with you guys and answer your questions. And uh, this person uh, went into additional detail. Said he's going to run away if because he doesn't think it's a very good co course. Okay. That's fine. I said, I'm just a guy on the forum, same as you. My point is that terrible and unpleasant people will call terrible and unpleasant. That's a real person you're talking about. I know I'm being a little bit meta there. <laughs> Sometimes the mood hits me when I'm on the forum. All right. So how is everybody today? Um, if, you, if you guys have anything you want to see on the stream, if there's uh, an exercise you're working on that you'd like me to go through, to give it so we can have a little more attention about what you guys are working on. If there's something that you're doing on Duolingo, in fact, it might like I always try to encourage people to bring up Duolingo during the live stream. Um, that way, if you come up with a question while you're doing your own Duolingo, you, you can pop on the chat and say, Hey, I have a question, and then we can answer it. All right, so I do, I did tell you I had some announcements. Um, I guess my, my biggest news is that. This morning, I noticed that I got an email from YouTube saying that uh, Esperanto Variety Show is uh, has been accepted at, back into the YouTube Partner Program. So to all you guys who've been watching the live streams, who's, who've been watching the videos, who've been giving good feedback on, on how we can make this better, um, thank you. It's uh, it's worked out. We got, we've got more people watching than we did a year ago. And thanks to that, um, I can now... Uh, rejoin the YouTube partner program. Uh, so that's one more goal checked off and then we can move forward to the next goal from there. Um, yeah, so that's that's one bit of news. Um, kind of related to that, uh, very indirectly, um, I wanted to mention this about, I want to do a spinoff channel because I've gotten a lot of, a lot of people are watching, um, people are watching the uh, live streams and a lot of people are not watching them and either leaving comments or just simply unsubscribe. Well, hello again. Salut on refoye. Verschein mi havastro da malfermitai fenestroi. Welcome again. Welcome back to Esperanto Variety Show's ninth um, live stream. Oh, yen nova nomo. Emil, salut on. Hello again. Salut on refoye. Bonne. Okay, I do, for those of you who are watching, I want to let you know this is the screenshot of the upcoming uh, upcoming video for Thursday. It's going to be a shortened version of my conversation with Lee Miller. Uh, as uh, regular listeners of the live stream would have heard, this is going to be a shortened version, uh, just over half an hour, mostly of uh, like almost 100% of our Esperanto language um, content from our conversation there. Always looking for more guests. If anybody would like to be a guest on Esperanto Variety Show, the guests tell me that it's fun <laughs> and easy. So it would be, um, be nice to have you join us. Thinking about having Lee back. Want to know what you guys think about that. So why is it not, I think this is the new question, why is it not Kiel Sofia Estas? What is the difference between Fartas and Estas? So what do you guys think? Why do we say Kiel Fartas Sofia? Kiel Sofia Fartas, and we don't say Kiel she estas. I'm going to say estas. Uh, how do we explain that, right? Because that's, that's the trouble is he's thinking he's thinking too literally in English. A lot of languages work this way. I say a lot of languages say this differently. In English, we say is. However, estas means to exist or to have a quality or to be the same as something, right? We want to know to know how, how things are going for her. We don't want to know how she exists. Kia Sofia Fartas. How is Sofia? Um, oh, here we go. So here's the sentence. Chu vi volas acetti ti un bildon. Do you want to buy that picture? So there was a conversation. I think that while picture is correct, the word painting can also be used. And somebody said, not really. Painting, pentrajo, refers to something that has been painted. 
Uh, Bildo is any sort of picture, including a photograph, a drawing, print, or etching. And the recent comment was, I guess photo was too specific. It was not accepted. Which to me sounds like the course is working the way it should. If they want to know if you're going to buy a picture, you shouldn't assume that it's a photograph. If you want to say explicitly it's a photograph, you could say, Chuvi volas acetti tiun photon. Chuvi volas acetti tiun fotografiajon. Yep. I want to let you guys uh, know that this is really your stream, and with the exception of the uh, <laughs> technical difficulties, for which I apologize, you know, I want to put the things on the stream that are interesting to you. So I had a request to answer some questions. We're going to have another live stream midday next week. Then uh, I also want to let you know that watch the announcement for the Salivanto channel. Be sure to check out the, um, the tab, the uh, community tab. Person says, um, I was given the multiple choice option for the last word on this. And without knowing what the word was supposed to be, I had to choose between she sees the woman and she, she sees the cat. Got it wrong because I chose cat since I had no other context. She vidas la caton was an option. I got it wrong because it didn't it didn't magically know that a woman she was seeing instead of a cat. Don't give me another correct options if it can be marked incorrect for them. It messes with my patients for no good reason. All right. Well, without actual without an actual screenshot of what was seen in that sentence, I don't really have a whole lot to add. Um, sometimes it might be uh, grammatically incorrect, but ultimately those are chosen at random. Um, if this happens to you again, uh, where you're doing a, a drop-down and there are multiple choices that are correct, what I would do is I would screenshot it, and then I would go to support.duolingo.com, and I would fill out a bug report. Um, this is not anything that anybody in the forum can take care of, <laughs> um, and it's not anything, as far as I know, that the uh, course creators um, can take care of. It's actually something that Duolingo needs to be informed about. Uh, I can understand it's frustrating, but without a screenshot, there's nothing that uh, support can do about it, and certainly there's nothing that uh, the pe random people reading the forum can do anything about. Uh, okay, yep. So this is um, this is a new question. The person says he wanted he wanted help with the word good, right? So I imagine this is somebody who's new. He says he's got a two-day streak and he's been on Duolingo. He's gotten up to level five, which is you know fairly new to the Esperanto course. And he's seen the word good, bona, in many different forms. I see bona, bone, bonan, bonas. And he wants to know why there are so many different forms for bonus. And my answer to him was, you're basically asking for the entire Esperanto grammar <laughs> in, uh, uh, you're, you're asking for somebody to explain the entire Esperanto grammar in a single forum post. So I said, I encourage you to read the tips and notes and then also to do the Lerno Kun Logano course and get a free tutor by email. That way you can really get into the grammar, and then while you're waiting for your tutor to get back to you, you can um, continue to work on your Duolingo. And the person says, I see the light bulb. This is a different person, I think. Yep, I see the light bulb only on the website, not on the app. Um, and, uh, yep, so he suggests going to duome.eu to see your uh, tips and notes. My thought is, if the app is not showing you the tips and notes, then you should log in once or twice a week to the app, to the website and use the tips and notes. Because without the tips and notes, you're just guessing. Why does it say bone, bona, bonas, and so on? Um, and so he, so I said, so I, so anyway, uh, Roberto wrote a fairly detailed explanation about what every ending means in Esperanto. And then I'm left a comment saying, note that forms like bonu and bonas are not preferred. It would be better to say, tio estas bona, that is good, or estu bona, be good. And I had a link to the uh, adjectives love them or leave them um, uh, essay that I wrote um, regarding the phrase, kia bluas la aquo, or kia bluas la lago, which is a phrase that Claude Perron used. And it, by the way, hint, it does not mean how blue <laughs> the lake is. Uh, so, yeah, so check out that blog post. 
uh, adjectives, love them or leave them. And so he's so Roberto said, here's Lee's Miller list. Here's Lee Miller's list of adjective roots that roughly mean SD root a verbs. Yep. So this is actually something that Licio and I talked about in great detail multiple times as he was compiling this list. Um, and in my blog post that I have, that I have linked, um, I have a shorter list and, uh, a lot of these things, just about everything on Lee's list are things that I say, but I don't I don't think that all of them really mean to be this, right? Though so mi malsatas means I feel hunger. Right? Mi curajas means I show bravery. La voyo longas tri kilometroin, and Lee said that he doesn't use that very often. Right? Mi contentas. I, I feel contentment. But yeah, but a lot of but but yeah, you could get away with saying me me estas mal or me malsatas means I am hungry. Anyway, this is an, an an interesting list, and I have a similar list in my blog post there. I do want to once again mention that the Thursday video that's coming up is going to be conversatio con Lee Miller, um, and it's going to be a uh, slightly edited version of the conversation from the live stream where Lee was was a guest. Uh, he said he's willing to come back, and I wanted to be able to sort of let people know that this conversation exists. He and I had a conversation in Esperanto, so that when we he does come back, people can know what that is. Um, I was going to let you know about on the community tab um, that uh, for those of you who are not interested in German live streams or Spanish live streams, that I'm going to have a new channel called Salivanto. You may or may not be able to find it in um, search yet. I'm not sure. Um, the official launch of that channel is going to be on April 1st. And it's not an April Fool's Day joke. So that's the plan there. Oh, let's see. Three hours ago. Ne veras tio char achetas ion oni kiam ne havas ion oni. I don't understand. Por acheti panon unue videvas havi panon. In order to buy bread, first, you must have bread. I think what he's trying to say is, uh, ironically, I speak alien. Um, uh, he's trying to say that in order to buy something, you you buy things that you don't have. Yeah, I think in order to buy bread, first, we, we, bread has to exist. Li ne povas acheti panon, char li ne havas monon. Ili ne havas all right that's not very interesting moving on okay not ili havas multain paron da blue eye blue jeans on unu jeans here's the new comment is from trachurus the trachurus trachurus one unu jeans a pair of jeans unu pantalono a pair of pants unu tondilo a pair of scissors um, I never know how to react when people post things in the forum that are 100% true. <laughs> uh, right. I don't, I don't, I never know how to react. Somebody po posted three months ago and he had something to add. Um, it's 100% true. I'm not sure that anybody asked that question, but if anybody has that question and happens to click on this, there's the answer. Somebody, um, I, I posted a link to, um, something I'd said about a sentence after the live stream last week and somebody uh, kind of made a comment and I, and I, in a way kind of apologized to him. I said, well, you know, one of the problems I have is when you're, when you're seeing when I, when I, one of the dangers of answering these questions on the live stream is you have access to my unedited thoughts, my initial reaction before I have a chance to really kind of reflect and think, all right, where is this person coming from? And is there more than one way to read this question? And, and have I read it wrong? And these sorts of things. Um, so if I've offended anybody by, chuckling at your comments because I don't understand why they're there. That's my fault for not understanding. Okay, so this person asks, what kind of word is pardonu? Sorry is an adjective, but pardonu is not an adjective, is it? Nope, it's a verb. Pardon me. He said, isn't me essential, so why is it omitted? omitted? Yeah, see, this is another one I don't know how to answer. The sentences in the course are there as models. And so how do you know when you say something a certain way in Esperanto? Well, because that's the way the model sentence is written, right? So 
pardonu mi ne fartas bone? Why don't we say, pardon me, I'm not doing well? I don't know, who can say? Um, how will you know that ahead of time? Well, you got to learn it, right? So I'm not sure, we're not really sure how to answer that question. Um, you could say, pardonu min, mi ne fartas bone. I don't know that that's ne actually necessary. Um, yeah, so English, and I guess my short answer is English and Esperanto are different. So just look at the examples and try to learn from them. Occasionally the, occasionally the examples are weird in the course, but uh, most of the time they're good. Here's another recent uh, comment. I agree too. I couldn't figure out what the whole sentence was about. All right, can I play this? Okay, this is the, vocho, the voice of Duolingo, and he says, Chula verda shafo parolas esperanton. Chula verda shafo parolas esperanton. And the question was, is it sped up? <laughs> no, it's not sped up. And somebody else, yeah, that's what Hello Midnight says. It sounded extremely fast. And this person says, does this sentence mean anything in particular? Does the green sheep speak Esperanto? Not specifically. But the green part surely is a reference to green as the color of Esperanto. I recall Ruth KC, who's, uh, by the way, the, uh, the awesome um, unsung hero of the Esperanto course. Um, she included the sentence in her recent presentation about Duolingo at NASC. If you guys are using Duolingo, you guys should all know who Ruth KC is and send her a thank you letter. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's what I think about that. Sometimes things are expressed with the assumption in mind. Pardon me. Mean is assumed, right? Dangon Ruth. Yes. Dangon Ruth. Okay, here's one. Um, is I travel to Australia to see my parents wrong? And this is another thing that I, quite honestly, I, I try to figure out how do I, you know, does this need an answer? Sometimes I, sometimes I just don't answer these. All right, here's the here's the sentence. Mi voyages al Australio por visiti miain gepatrin, to visit my parents. I'm going to Australia to visit my parents. And so somebody wants to know, is it okay to say I'm going to see my parents? Well, visiting somebody and seeing somebody are similar, but they're not the same, right? And I think, I think that uh, to me that's obvious. Um, if it's not obvious, maybe somebody else can come along and answer that question <laughs> for this person. Uh, seeing and visiting are two different things, and while they're similar, you want to get it as literal as possible and only as free as necessary. Here's another window that crashed I was going to tell you guys about. Uh, the reason why the start time of the live stream was so strange today is I had a an italki lesson just before this. So somebody saw the German live stream where we're going through exercise after exercise in German and then explaining the grammar behind it. And she said, you know what? I want to do that too. I want to do that one-on-one -on -one and get that going. So if you guys would like to try that, let me know and we can get that set up. Um, I teach mostly English and Esperanto on italki, and, uh, but also I've been um, teaching some A1 German. So that's, uh, that may be an opportunity for you. Um, wanted to mention that with the with the um, acceptance into the YouTube Partner Program, you might see some ads on videos now. Um, I just want to let you know I'm not going to get rich on YouTube ads. Uh, so what um, I really put a lot of time into this um, YouTube channel. Today's maybe not the best example because of the way things because of the way things crashed. Um, if you guys like to watch the videos on Thursday in Esperanto, if there's something on the live stream that you like to see, if there's um, questions that you have and you have you get value out of me being on YouTube, uh, please consider supporting what I do so we so I can keep doing this full time. Um, otherwise, I'm going to have to cut way back. Um, cut cut way back is a nice way of saying uh, quit. <laughs> quite honestly, um, but. Uh, Yep, so I will be doing this through July, uh, making regular YouTube videos. And then after, after July, um, I'm going to have to reconsider uh, the situation. So in the meanwhile, if you guys want to take uh, a lesson on italki, if you want to support on Patreon, 
Um, if you want to watch some ads, if there's something, if there's an ad that you like for a product you like, you want to watch the ad um, instead of using an ad blocker, I would really appreciate that. Um, although you, I get something like two cents every time you watch an ad, just to let you know that. All right, I'm going to answer. I'm going to look at. I'm going to do. Um, I'm actually out of time, so let's take a look at this one last sentence, and then we're going to wrap it up. How long should it take for a monoglot like me to be fluent in Esperanto? I will be using Duolingo, Memrise, and Quizlet. I should be studying for about one to two hours every day. I only speak English. Thanks for the help. And here is my favorite answer, so I voted it up. It's by Carbs Rule. And he says, as long as it takes, everyone is different. And some uses of time are more effective than others. That said, one to two hours a day should get you very quickly making gains. And within a few weeks, you should be able to talk about basic things and read simple text. Felician Lernadon. And so what is this? this was my answer, my piggyback onto Carbs Rule. By the way, Carbs Rule, I think you're awesome. Um, you've had some answers on the forum that uh, I thought were right on point, and uh, it's nice to see you out there helping people out. So this was what I piggybacked onto his comment. I said, I was coming back to this discussion with the plan of posting, don't listen to any of the answers you've gotten or will get. Just worry about you. Fluency is a journey, not a destination. It's possible to become more fluent than you were before, but you will never wake up one morning and cross become fluent in Esperanto off your to-do list. Another misconception is that it's possible to first learn Esperanto and then go off and use it. It's by using Esperanto that you will really learn. So um, one thought I meant to leave you guys with was, do we want to do, as going forward, would it be interesting to do um, two Esperanto live streams a week? Um, one for more intermediate German, sorry, intermediate Esperanto. Did I say German or Esperanto? We, 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 curious whether you guys want to do two Esperanto live streams per week, um, whether there's more interest in real beginner type stuff or whether we, there'd be more interest in something a little more intermediate. Um, that's something to think about in the weeks coming up. And I'm going to take one more look at the chat and then I will say goodbye to everybody. Okay. Saluton de nove. Shamanio says, yes. Dankon Ruth, mi pensus kvar yaroi. Necesas kvar yaroi por farigi flua. Do bono do yen. Shamanio havas la lastan penson de la tago. Kai gis revido.